This episode will review when and how fetal growth restriction is diagnosed during pregnancy along with causes of fetal growth restriction, which was previously referred to as intrauterine fetal growth restriction or IUGR. For those of you who are new here, I am Kendra, founder of Alay Life and a board certified genetic counselor who specializes in prenatal care. I produce informational videos and up-to-date information on prenatal genetic testing and how to navigate unexpected news in pregnancy. I also offer one-on-one -on -one virtual genetic counseling and prenatal expertise following the diagnosis of fetal growth restriction or other unexpected news in pregnancy. See the link below to schedule an appointment today. Please press the subscribe button now to support our community and allow me to continue providing free and accurate prenatal expertise to you. One important point before we get started. There are two primary guidelines on fetal growth restriction. One is from the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine, also known as SMFM, and this is primarily followed by providers in the United States. The second guideline is from the International Society of Ultrasound and Obstetrics and Gynecology, also known as ISUOG, and this guideline may be used more commonly outside the U.S. Let's talk a little about what it means to have a baby with fetal growth restriction. And when is fetal growth restriction diagnosed? Fetal growth restriction is diagnosed in one in every 10 pregnancies, so about 10% of all pregnancies. Fetal growth restriction can be diagnosed anytime in the second or third trimester of pregnancy. Let's talk about how fetal growth restriction is diagnosed. This diagnosis is made by ultrasound measurements. Accurate pregnancy dating is critical to diagnosing a baby with fetal growth restriction. Pregnancy dating is best established when the crown rump length of the baby is measured in the first trimester and is used to either confirm menstrual dates or assign a new date. In the United States, the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine defines fetal growth restriction as one of the two definitions. The first is an estimated fetal weight or EFW less than the 10th percentile, or the second definition is an abdominal circumference or AC measurement less than the 10th percentile. The estimated fetal weight is calculated by most ultrasound technology using many different measurements of a fetus. These include the fetal biparietal diameter, the head circumference, the abdominal circumference, and the femur length. This weight is then compared with a reference chart based on large population data to generate a weight percentile. Outside the United States, fetal growth restriction may be diagnosed differently. For example, the International Society of Ultrasound in Obstetrics and Gynecology uses both the fetal growth measurements and certain blood flow measurements in the uterine arteries and fetal vessels, known as the Dopplers. This definition is more complex and will not be covered in detail today. Fetal growth restriction is considered more severe when the EFW or AC measures less than the third percentile for gestational age. Why is it important to identify if a fetus is growth restricted? Detecting fetal growth restriction is important so that the pregnancy can be monitored more closely with the goal of reducing the chance of an adverse outcome, including stillbirth. A fetus with an estimated fetal weight less than the third percentile is at the highest risk of stillbirth, and therefore these pregnancies should be monitored the most closely. Institutionally small which means they are otherwise healthy, but just a small size, which may be due to the race, ethnicity, or the biological parent's height. This is also because the criteria used to determine if a fetus is growth restricted is based on large population data and does not take into account individual factors, such as maternal size or parental ethnicity or height. Let's talk a little about why fetal growth restriction happens. Fetal growth restriction can happen due to health issues in the pregnant person or because of placental or fetal factors. In some cases, a combination of factors may cause fetal growth restriction. I'm going to walk through each of the various factors now. The first is placental factors. The most common cause of growth restriction is placental insufficiency, which means that oxygen and nutrients are not sufficiently transferred to the fetus via the placenta. Other medical terms to describe this may be suboptimal perfusion, other placental issues associated with growth restriction include a velamentous cord insertion, a circumvallate placenta, and a single umbilical artery, also known as a two-vessel cord. 
This cause, placental causes, represents one out of every four babies with growth restriction, or about 25 to 30% of all cases. The second cause of growth restriction is maternal factors. Various maternal factors can increase the risk of growth restriction. These include pre-existing medical conditions in the pregnant person, such as chronic high blood pressure, diabetes, not gestational diabetes, however, kidney disease, or antiphospholipid syndrome. The pregnant person's use of certain substances and medications can also cause growth restriction. Smoking cigarettes during pregnancy is one of the preventable causes of fetal growth restriction. Some maternal factors may impact the function of the placenta, which just shows that fetal growth restriction can be due to multiple factors. A third cause of fetal growth restriction is differences in the fetus, and this may include a genetic difference. A genetic difference can be due to a chromosome condition, such as a missing or extra piece of a chromosome, or a genetic condition due to a spelling change within a single gene. There is approximately a 6% chance for an underlying chromosome condition in a fetus with isolated growth restriction. Isolated meaning that there is no difference seen in the fetal anatomy. This means that there is also up to a 94% chance for no chromosome condition to be causing the fetal growth restriction. In the setting of severe fetal growth restriction, which is identified more early in pregnancy, the risk of a genetic or chromosome condition can be higher. Certain fetal infections, most commonly cytomegalovirus or CMV, can also cause a baby to be growth restricted. And then there are certain structural differences in the fetal anatomy, often referred to as congenital malformations or birth defects that can cause growth restriction. It's important when we see a baby that's growth restricted on ultrasound to determine if we can figure out the cause of that growth restriction. Placental issues are difficult to diagnose prenatally. Often a placental cause for fetal growth restriction is suspected once other causes have been ruled out. Certain tests may be offered to help determine or rule out a fetal cause, including a congenital infection or a chromosome or genetic condition. Specifically, amniocentesis can be performed to test for chromosome conditions through a test called a chromosome microarray analysis, and in some cases, other genetic tests can be performed on the amniotic fluid. If an amniocentesis is performed, testing for certain viruses, such as cytomegalovirus, can also be performed on the fluid. If you have had negative genetic screening during pregnancy, such as an NIPT test or a serum screening test, keep in mind that those tests are not 100% accurate and cannot test for all chromosome or genetic conditions in a baby. You can still consider the option of amniocentesis. Various genetic tests can be performed on amniotic fluid, including a chromosomal microarray analysis to look at all 23 pairs of chromosomes to see if there's any extra missing material. If you are taking any medications during pregnancy, speak to your healthcare provider about whether your medications may be a possible cause of your baby's growth restriction. Many people wonder, are babies that are growth restricted delivered early? The timing and mode of delivery of pregnancies with fetal growth restriction is based on a combination of factors, which include the severity of the growth restriction, which can be based on fetal weight, the results of fetal surveillance, which may include umbilical artery dopplers, a biophysical profile or BPP score, a non-stress test or NST, the gestational age of the baby, the presence of other medical issues in the pregnant person, such as hypertension. All of these factors play an important part in determining when and if a baby should be born prior to full term. Can fetal growth restriction babies be normal after delivery? The answer is yes, some babies diagnosed with fetal growth restriction will just be born small at birth. By small, we mean a baby who has a birth weight less than the 10th percentile compared to other babies of the same gestational age. These babies may be small due to factors like ethnicity, sex, and the height of the baby's biological parents. Some families ask, will my baby who's born with growth restriction always be small? Some babies with less severe growth restriction may not stay growth restricted throughout the whole pregnancy. It is also possible that some babies diagnosed as growth restricted on prenatal ultrasound will be born with a birth weight in the normal range, which is over the 10th percentile for gestational age. People often wonder, is growth restriction the same as small for gestational age or SGA? 
The answer to that is no. The term fetal growth restriction describes a baby with an estimated fetal weight below the 10th percentile. A small for gestational age baby describes a newborn whose birth weight is less than the 10th percentile for gestational age. Fetuses that are growth restricted are not always small for gestational age at birth. And small for gestational age newborns have often not been diagnosed as growth restricted on prenatal ultrasound. Let's talk a little about the treatment for fetal growth restriction. There are currently no proven strategies to prevent or treat fetal growth restriction. There is no consistent evidence that nutritional and dietary supplements or bed rest prevents growth restriction. If you are using tobacco or other substances during pregnancy, talk with your healthcare provider about strategies for reducing your tobacco use and working toward quitting. Tobacco use is a known and preventable cause of fetal growth restriction. Please stay tuned for a second episode that will talk about the management of a baby with fetal growth restriction. In closing, please support our community by liking and subscribing to this channel. I would love to hear from each of you. Share a comment below about your own experience with the diagnosis of fetal growth restriction or topics you would like me to cover in a future episode. With love and light, see you next time.